The men of the 4th Division waited silently in the pre-dawn darkness, anxious to prove themselves. Many of their fellow Union soldiers questioned their ability, not only because few had ever been in battle, but because they were black. July 30, 1864, 4.44 a.m. As a Michigan soldier observed, there came a deep shock like an earthquake. Then a monstrous tongue of flame shot 200 feet into the air, followed by a column of white smoke. A spout of red earth rose to a great height, mingled with men and guns, timbers and planks, all ascending, scattering and falling with great concussion to the earth. Where there was once a Confederate fort, there was now only a smoking crater. Determined to break the six-week-old stalemate at Petersburg, Union soldiers worked day and night to dig a mine beneath the Confederate defenses. Packed with gunpowder, the mine exploded, busting an opening through which the Federals could seize the hill beyond. With Petersburg under Union guns, the Confederates would be forced to abandon the city and ultimately the Confederate capital at Richmond. As artillery pounded the Confederate lines, the lead Union regiments of 9th Corps charged into the crater. Recovering from their initial surprise, Southern artillerymen unleashed a storm of lead and iron against the Federals inside the pit. Panicking and disorganized, they blocked the forward movement of the all-black 4th Division coming behind them. July 30, 1864, 7.30 a.m. Unlike their comrades, black soldiers and their white officers believe that to be wounded or captured meant almost certain death. Three months earlier, at Fort Pillow, Tennessee, Confederates killed, wounded, and surrendering black soldiers. Now the black soldiers cried, Remember Fort Pillow! as they passed around and through the chaos of the crater, rallying on the far side. At the very moment the black troops started toward the hill beyond the crater, hundreds of screaming Virginians smashed headlong into them. Although experienced veterans, this was the first time they confronted a long-standing southern nightmare, armed black men. It was rumored that the black Federals were not taking prisoners either. Nine hours after the battle began, the Confederates controlled the crater. One-fifth of the Union soldiers were killed, wounded, or missing. The greatest losses were suffered by the men of the 4th Division. The experience of the crater influenced the beliefs of men on both sides about the ability of black soldiers.